everyone. Thank you for joining us uh, for this virtual program on the steps of grieving the curious charms of Arthur Pepper with Miss Amanda Jernigan uh, from Godensia Incorporation. Um, she is currently a outpatient clinical director at Godensia Incorporation, and she also teaches on subjects ranging from addiction um, to um, prevention and more at Penn State Harrisburg. And today she'll speak on the grieving process and the main character's journey of self-discovery throughout this novel. Um, and throughout the presentation, um, we will also have um, options available uh, for chat, audio, and webcam. Um, and um, can I welcome Miss Amanda Jernigan? Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, so this novel um, was a very uplifting um, book about a widow named Arthur Pepper uh, who went on this journey after finding a charm bracelet that his uh, <clears throat> his wife, deceased wife, um, had. And he just goes on this uh, journey all over the world. Um, and I would just like to get your input on your opinion, you know, of the novel. I really liked the novel. I think that it was a great example of a journey of self-discovery uh, and how Arthur challenged himself and did things that he previously viewed himself as not being for him. Um, and broke free of those preconceived limitations that he had for himself. I thought that was very inspiring. Uh, I also thought the whole process of him getting out of the, the, um, the grief cycle was inspiring to those who may be stuck on the grief cycle continuum uh, and mm -hmm. how at the end he found a level of peace. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, in your um, current work experiences, um, can you describe your um, experience helping those in grieving? Absolutely. I think that there is not a right way or a wrong way to grieve. Uh, a lot of times people come into therapy looking for someone to tell them how to grieve, but it's actually a process and a journey. Uh, and it has many different phases. I think that there are oftentimes extenuating circumstances that come into play for some people. So. Um, some aspects of grief might remind you of a previous loved one that you've lost or something traumatic that's happened to you in your life, which kind of complicates the grief process a bit. Uh, mm -hmm. But you can get stuck sometimes and stay in one phase longer than others. Uh, but all in all, it's an individualized journey for everyone. Yeah, and especially with Arthur, he, um, like during this time before his journey, he was doing the same thing, you know, day after day. Um, and then, you know, he uh, went on this journey. So I guess, yeah, it's individual for everyone, as you stated. Um, how would you describe Arthur um, from a psychology perspective? So from the perspective of when the book opened, he met the criteria for clinical depression. Uh, he was not taking care of himself. There was no food in the home, really. He wasn't taking care of the house or the yard. He really had a lack of motivation to do things. Uh, he kind of felt hopeless and helpless. He did have some anxiety, uh, which was also present by maintaining a schedule, wearing the exact mm -hmm. same outfit every day, and that fear of change. Uh, he also had some obsessive compulsive tendencies, such as eating the same meal every day for breakfast. Mm -hmm. um, that routine with this plant, Francesca, and his mm -hmm. bedtime and wake time. He was very uh, stuck in that routine, which probably was driven by anxiety for him to uh, keep his anxiety under control. Mm -hmm. Yeah, especially that feeling of control. I think mm -hmm. that was, um, yeah, prominent there. Absolutely. Um, and when he finds um, this charm bracelet, that his wife had um, in this box. Um, can you explain his feelings of grief um, at the beginning of this uh, process and throughout? 
So I think it actually set him back in the grief process. I think he was kind of stuck in the depression phase of grief, but I saw some of it go back to the very first phase of grief, which was anger. He was angry about this secret life and confused um, and thought that he knew her so well. Um, so I think that in the beginning, then it kind of went on to bargaining, trying to figure out what he really wanted to find out. He was only going to find out about the first charm and then let it go. And then it just kept building from there. So it kind of reset his grief cycle for him. Yeah, I think um, like throughout um, his process, he was he was kind of like <clears throat> also reinventing himself in a way throughout mm -hmm. the journey and um, throughout this process. Um, and the first thing that he does is uh, he travels to India uh, to meet a man named Rajesh um, Mehra. And uh, he discovers uh, his wife was a nanny <clears throat> to uh, this man. And uh, how do his travels to all these different places um, affect his life perspective and uh, his emotional responses thereafter? I think it really stuck out to me that it showed that everybody is has a story. Uh, not everyone is just like judging a book by the cover. Uh, and at different times in our lives, we need different things to fill either voids or needs that we have and those change over time. So something that we might like in our 20s is, may not be something that we like in our 30s and 40s and 50s and so on. Um, I think it also challenged his perceptions of societal roles. Uh, and that, the, that you know, you don't just have to be a dad and you don't just have to be a provider and that you can be all these other things in addition. So I mm -hmm. thought that was a pretty prominent uh, piece. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and I think that, um, like, especially now um, with the current pandemic, um, you know, like there's, uh, you know, feelings. Um, you know, from this book that I gathered as well, you know, that we all may be feeling um, in a certain way and, um, you know, the feelings of control and, um, you know, wanting to, um, you know, like kind of reinvent yourself in a way. Um, Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, and so each charm has a different story. Uh, first charm that he uh, looks at is the elephant. Um, and it, uh, has some stories such as his, uh, his wife, um, meaning like this young single older woman, um, and her connection to her work. Um, how does this relate to trust and mistrust in relationships? So Eric Erickson, uh, his psychological theory is really the driving force between trust and mistrust. And behind that is as young children, we learn the idea of trust and mistrust. And we usually get that example from adults. We learn that if we have a problem, people are going to be there for us. Uh, and once you solve that in Eric Erickson's theory, you move through different psychological crises throughout your life. And I think that for uh, you know, this book, it really showed that that can be called into question at any phase in psycho in the psychological development process is he thought he knew everything about her. And then he started to mistrust what it was and who she was as a person and that she had settled to make him happy and she wasn't happy. So it made him mistrustful of all the things that he thought were real, uh, which caused anxiety and all these different pieces uh, of the puzzle for him. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, I think that also like relates to um, you know different different needs maybe perhaps not being met um, throughout uh, their marriage and relationship. Do you uh, agree with that as well? Also? I think so, and I think that's that became evident in the level of despair he felt, especially at the one scene where he's standing in the ocean debating mm -hmm. whether or not to jump in is he just hit that state of total despair of who can I trust in the world? You know, it's like something looks a certain way on the outside, but it's totally different on the inside. 
uh, mm -hmm. and not knowing what to do with those thoughts and feelings. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and his experiences also um, kind of uh, change his relationships with his family and friends, um, such as, you know, with his daughter, Lisa. How, um, how do you see their relationship um, changing, you know, throughout the novel? So initially, you know, he saw his role as more as the secondary parent. Uh, and even uh, even though they were adult children, he didn't take the lead because that was his wife's responsibility slash job. Um, but then he started to realize that no matter how old your kids are, adults or not, they still need their parents. And it was more important for him after seeing these relationships his wife had built with other people that he didn't want to be alone. And there were people right mm -hmm. in front of him that he could have his own journey with. He was just not reaching out and not utilizing them. Um, and, and he needed that at one point to fulfill that emptiness he felt. So mm -hmm. I think with his daughter, it was apparent she was the easiest to start with because she lived here. Mm -hmm. um, and you know the same with the neighbor across the street, he was hiding from her and then he started mm -hmm. to seek her out. So, you know, uh, those types of needs, we all need human interaction. We just, mm -hmm. some of us need it more frequently than others, uh, but the main just post of us is being able to have conversations with people, being able to bounce ideas off of people, being able to spend time doing, you know, even the smallest things like going to the store together, shopping. Mm -hmm. uh, but I thought that was very evident. Yeah, and especially, um, I think it's important that, uh, that Arthur talked with, you know, his neighbor and his family members and friends um, and all these new individuals that he met um, to, you know, talk about his feelings and be able to process them throughout the process, you know, instead of, um, you know, holding it inside and not speaking about it. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And letting other people share their stories and memories. Everyone mm -hmm. in town had a memory of his wife, but he thought he was the only one that was hurting and missing her. Even the male mm -hmm. lady enjoyed mm -hmm. meeting with her. Um, so yeah. when you start sharing, you realize you're not alone. Other people missed her as well, just not to maybe to the extent that he did, um, mm -hmm. but that she touched other people that way too. Yeah, mm -hmm. very true. Um, so what, well, so as you uh, mentioned, um, obviously the help of his family, um, is a great component um, in his, uh, you know, recovery and healing process. Um, what else throughout the novel do you believe helps him achieve this healing and self-discovery? I think that a lot of it was different, learning how different people perceived his wife. Um, I think that was a big piece of, it wasn't just, all the memories that he had of her, but all these other memories that were just as important and rounded her out as a person. You know, he seemed very, in the beginning, concrete into those family, those societal roles of men are providers, women mind the house, only to find out that she did all these amazing things. Um, I especially mm -hmm. think that it encouraged him to step outside those, you know, rigid boundaries that he had set for himself, especially for when he became the nude model for the day for the art class. Mm -hmm. Like, I thought that was an extremely pivotal point for him. Something in the beginning you never would have expected Arthur to do. The man in the mustard sweater vest or wearing the blue pants after he went to visit the tigers when he ripped his pants from jumping the fence. Mm -hmm. Wearing sandals, uh, you know, stepping out of these comfort zones really helped him see there's more to the world than those concrete roles or or um, ideals that he had identified for himself mm -hmm. yeah and able to be vulnerable and be okay with um you know exploring you know different things yeah and mm -hmm. i think his identity changed too so he went from a husband and a father to now you know being adventurous and meeting you know playing with a tiger without even knowing Right. Mm -hmm. and, and drinking so much that he, you know, he has a headache the next day. Things that he when when his wife died, he didn't know what to do because his role was a husband. 
-hmm. and a father. Mm -hmm. And this gave him the possibility to find new roles, if you will. Yeah, to, you know, become, uh, yeah, to change his identity and, you know, mm -hmm. find him. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and throughout this novel, um, there's a theme of mindfulness and, you know, being present. Um, what are some ways that viewers can embody this kind of mindfulness during this pandemic and after the pandemic? Uh, you know, I, I was picking on Arthur's routine earlier, but uh, with mindfulness, the main important piece of it is making time to participate in mindfulness every day. You have to make a conscious effort to do so. Um, and mindfulness is really that concept of perceiving things and observing things and it can be developed through things like meditation and exercise and breathing activities um, mm -hmm. the most important thing about mindfulness is you have to commit you have to say i'm going to make time for this even if it's 15 minutes every day um, there are apps for everything on our cell phones there are meditation apps you can get one minute meditations five minute meditations 15 minute meditations uh, we always seem to have our phones with us in our society today. Um, so I even recommend to people like spend time on your lunch break, sitting outside and taking in a five minute meditation. That's really using your five senses and what can you hear? What can you see? You know, what can you feel? Um, and just being present in the moment, not being distracted by what you have to do next on your list or, you know, what what's lying ahead, but being present in that moment. Yoga is a great exercise to do mindfulness in because you're so focused on movements and breathing that you have to be present at that time. Um, and that could be finding a quiet space in your room. I've had people, I've recommended that take a corner of their bedroom and, and put a mat down and that's their meditation space. Um, just so they have their own personal area to just disconnect from the world. It's very easy just to keep going um, mm -hmm. because our lives don't stop so this is making this part of our everyday routine like brushing your teeth and eating meals and getting a shower this needs to be part of our daily practice um, I always recommend to people to start your day with it and end your day with it because that's nothing better than saying you know today's been a day it's over I'm clearing my mind and, and kind of setting the tone for a good bedtime routine mm -hmm. yeah and especially um you know like that self-care um, and uh, would you also recommend people like journal or, um, you know, write about their feelings? You know? I'm a big fan of journaling. They actually make um, daily journals with prompts. So if you're like, oh, I don't know what to write about, do some research and it'll give you a topic of the day for you to write about. Um, there's a lot of great uh, quotes. So sometimes even picking a great quote can give you a great idea of something to write about, uh, something inspiring mm -hmm. to you. Um, but I think journaling is amazing. Or, you know, the modern form of journaling is blogging. Mm -hmm. <laughs> even if it's a blog between you and a couple of friends is have a blog and, you know, have those discussions. It doesn't have to be public. Uh, if you don't want it to be but you know i think that's a great opportunity for you to come in tune with yourself without the distractions of the world mm -hmm. yeah i believe there's um you know, like wordpress and uh i think medium is like another website that people can use to create a blog uh, mm -hmm. for free i believe yeah and there are beautiful leather bound journals. I'm a big believer of finding something that you love and treasure and use that as your journal. Uh, Etsy is one of my favorite places to find things like that, but Michael's and places like that sell them. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, find something that draws you and makes you want to write in it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so what are some lessons uh, from this novel that can help us now um, and throughout our journeys? <laughs> I think if you're looking at this, I think not to put your life on hold. So if we look at it from the pandemic perspective, I myself will be the one I will lump myself into this category of saying that I thought this was something that would be short lived a month or two and life would resume back to normal. So everyone sort of hit the pause button. 
And here we are a year later and nothing has really changed. I mean, we are starting to see some change. Thankfully, we got toilet paper back, but mm -hmm. you know, we didn't always have that and we can't just pause our lives. So, uh, you know, I have created what I call my COVID normal and then I still have my normal normal in hopes that I will go back to that. Um, but it's still finding ways to connect with people on a regular basis, whether that's through Zoom or GoToMeeting or FaceTime. Um, we need that human connection. Um, making new memories, whatever that may look like. I have put together more um, puzzles with my family since the pandemic has hit than I've ever done in my life. And that's something we just have enjoyed doing uh, over the winter mm -hmm. months. Um, and spending time on you, trying something you might never have tried before. Like with me, it was puzzles. I used to find them annoying, but I went so as far as to buy like a puzzle sorter so we could separate the colors out and like do crazy things like that. So, um, you know, try something that you don't know and then, you know, find something that makes you happy, whatever that is. You know, this might, I think that this has taught us to slow down and appreciate life instead of going through life at 200 miles per hour, we're able to go through at, 50 or 100 miles per hour and spend time doing things that we enjoy doing that we have always pushed to the side because something else needed done or we needed to go here or we needed to go there. Um, so I think those are important life lessons. Yeah, and um, you know that human connection is very important um, as well as uh, you know finding um, things, um, you know, new crafts, new. Uh, um, you know, puzzles, as you mentioned, um, mm -hmm. anything that makes you happy um, and uh, just exploring, uh, you know, new topics that you may not have uh, thought about before the pandemic um, and, you know, being with your family, um, that is all very important. Um, and, I saw um, too on Facebook, mm -hmm. they're starting virtual tours often of like places like the pyramids and, mm -hmm. you know, castles in Scotland and things that we may not necessarily ever get to see in our lives if we're not travelers. Uh, but you can do that from the comfort of your home or hooking your mm -hmm. laptop up to your TV and streaming them and watching them that way. So those are great adventures uh, to do as well as to give yourself that treat of, oh, I've always wanted to check that out or learn more about that. Um, so I think that's good. I've seen also, uh, the neighborhood that we live in when the pandemic started last year, we did, um, driveway social hours where everyone would bring lawn chairs out to the end of their driveways oh, and everyone would kind of like sit around and talk without being close to each other. But it was a way for us to have that human interaction and the road wasn't busy. So it wasn't like anyone was a danger, but you know, you find creative ways to keep that human mm -hmm. connection. Yeah, yeah, I think that's um, the great thing about, um, about you know humanity. Like we always find um, new ways of doing things and creating, and um, yeah, absolutely. Um, do you have any other um, questions about the novel or um, and any advice for viewers on this topic of grieving? I think it's just if I give you advice on grieving is don't be hard on yourself. Um, you know, I think that at points in the um, story, it seemed like Arthur's neighbor had it all together when she herself was grieving the loss of her husband and she was taking it to the extreme of caring for others as trying to make herself feel better. Whereas the fact that she was kind of stuck in her own grieving process and she was deflecting and not dealing with it. Um, by putting and helping mm -hmm. others. So I think is just be patient and don't compare yourself to others. I have seen family members who grieve at completely different paces. They've all lost the same person, but somebody, you know, is okay in a month versus somebody who's struggling a year later. And then why can't I be like so and so? And it mm -hmm. just doesn't work like that. There's so many other factors at play. Yeah, that um, importance of uh you know, that, you know, we're all different and we all experience um, things at different times and we, um, you know, grieve for different lengths of time and, you know. And that everyone has a story and that we don't necessarily mm -hmm. know that story. So when we come in contact with people, 
you know, I, I always try to treat them with the utmost respect and try to learn what they're there to teach me. Because in my opinion, people come into our lives for a reason. Um, and I feel like that's what Arthur did throughout the book was he took whatever those people were giving and somehow turned mm -hmm. it into a way to improve himself as a person, mm -hmm. which I thought was a great, it was a beautiful part of that story. Yeah, yeah, I thought that was um, very inspirational and, um, you know, just being able to adapt with situations, you know, come out of it, um, you know, a new change person, you know. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, and learn from others. Mm -hmm. so. Uh, well, thank you so much um, again for uh, your expertise on grieving and uh, also your thoughts on the novel. Um, and I hope um, everyone enjoyed this uh, brief discussion today. Uh, we will have this uh, recording up on our Facebook page for everyone to view and uh, feel free to send us any questions um, that you have about the novel um, and or for our presenter, Ms. Amanda Jernigan, and I would be glad to uh, send them to her. Um, and um, I hope everyone has a nice day. It's very sunny, so um, uh, thank you, everyone. <laughs> thank you.